This is the 24th of, of October of 2020. And the name of this study is Pray for Our Enemies. Okay. Uh, first, we're going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you to uplift everyone within the sound of my voice. I ask you to put his own hedge of protection, Father. And I ask you to saturate us with the blood of Christ, Father, and with your Holy Spirit. Give us revelation, knowledge, and wisdom, and understanding and experience with you, Father. We ask that only your word goes out. And I ask that you keep it quiet outside, quiet and cool inside, and upload this video quickly. I also ask that you bless my eyes that I see perfectly, Father, and catch my speech and my understanding in Jesus' name. Okay. Like I said, the name of this study is Pray for Our Enemies. And we're going to read the book of Obadiah. It's one of those books that, uh, you know, and I've read it. I've not, you know what I mean? I've not gotten into it as much as I should. So we're going to look at it today. Obadiah. The vision of Obadiah, thus uh, saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Thou that dwelleth in the cliffs of the rocks, whose habitation is high, and whose saith in his heart, that, see, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou shalt exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, hence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen until they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy uh, confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee, um, they have deceived thee and prevailed against thee, that they mm, eat thy bread, have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau and thy mighty men O Teman shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was with them, who was one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger, neither thou that hast rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress, Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither should thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is here upon all the heathen as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee, thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. 
but upon Zion um, shall be delivered, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess all their possessions, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Galilee. And the, and the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even on to Sephon. Uh, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sephred, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the mount of Esau. Uh, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, so who was Obadiah? Okay. Uh, he was, his is for sure. Okay, wait, wait a minute. I got stuck. Okay. Uh, no one is for sure when he lived and if he was a contemporary with Elijah and Jeremiah. I'll tell you why in a, in a second here. A few seconds. He, We know he was a prophet. Obadiah means servant of Yahweh or eternal one. Gen, um, so guesses of when he lived is between 853 BC and 553. Okay. 553 is when Edom was destroyed. Obadiah is the shortest book in the Bible. Interesting. You want to know what the uh, shortest verse is? Which makes me sad, but it's, it says, Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible. Okay, so um, it's assumed Obadiah came from somewhere around the southern kingdom of Judah, near the holy city, so it was on the other side. Okay, <clears throat> what's interesting is there's 12 Obadiahs in the Old Testament, and, and uh, researchers are not uh, sure, you know, which one it is that wrote the book. It's interesting, okay? So we're going to look at Obadiah uh, verses 1 to 14. I'm sorry, 10 to 14. Obadiah 10 to 14. Keep in mind this. Keep in mind what it's saying. Obadiah 10 to 14. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive, his forces and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. So he was there, his tribe, the Edomites were there. Okay. Um, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger, neither shouldest thou have uh, rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in that in the day of their calamity. Should, thou shouldest not have looked upon uh, on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. He's telling us, God's telling us over and over and over, he's an avenger. He's the avenger. Don't take it matters in your own hand as far as this goes. You pray about it. 
Um, so on his see, so on its own, we know that oh, even the word I just read that it was small. There they were small of you know, they were few people. The Edomites were few people. We know that they uh, lived in the uh, caves and they lived up on the mountains, you know, sides of the mountains. The mountains, they lived up high. Because then we know that. We know that they were small. So we know that they could not have uh, destroyed Jerusalem or done anything, even, to, you know, done, done anything like that. They had to join forces with other people. Right? So, you know, really, it sounds like what's going on today. So, um, who was Edom? The descendants of Esau was Jacob's brother. And we read that. Let's go ahead to uh, Genesis chapter 25, verse 19 to 34. Genesis 25. Okay. Genesis 25, 19 to 34. Okay. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bithel, the Syrian of Panaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together with her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger uh, than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like a hairy garment. Okay, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was... Three score years old when she bare them, and the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, and a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob and uh, sawed pottage. Uh, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me uh, this day my birthright. Okay. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. What profit this? What profit shall this birthright do to me? And uh, Jacob said, Swear to me this day that. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, uh, and he did eat and drink and rose and went his way. And Esau despised his birthright. Whoa! So now we we know. Uh, just a little bit, just a little bit about how uh, Esau was. And now we know that Esau was renamed Edom. Okay? And we know that when he came out, he was uh, hairy like a garment. He was red, red hair, red hair on his body. Okay? So Edom uh, was another name for Esau. Esau means red in Hebrew. In the days of, of Obadiah, Edomites lived along the cliffs and mountains tops, okay, of the arid land south of the Dead Sea, all the way to the Gulf of Aquaba. 
on the Red Sea. Okay, the Edomites had a period of time they refused to let Israelites pass through. That was interesting. Okay. Uh, Edomites tried to conquer the country of Israel during the time of Jehoshaphat, but didn't succeed. Okay. So Edomites uh, were defeated and invaded by Saul. That's King Saul and King David did it also. Okay, so the Edomites allied with Nebuchadnezzar in invading Jerusalem. So they destroyed the first temple. They were uh, extremely brutal toward the Israelites. And I'm going to stop and interject something here. You see, like when, like you just heard me read about nation will rise against nation, you know, that two nations will be in the womb, or two nations is in the womb of Rebecca, right? Two nations will come out of her bowels, right? Then she had twins, Esau and Jacob. Okay, let's look at the best example I can I can bring up is the Middle East, okay? You know, you got uh, the, uh, you got two groups, two ethnic groups that call themselves Muslim, one Shiites and one's, um, Oh, I just lost the word. Do you know I did? But there's two different guys. What I'm saying is there's two. One's, uh, one is the Shiites. And offhand, all of a sudden, I can't remember what the other one is. But what I'm saying is this Muslim group here believes one thing. They got a different doctor and they do things differently. They teach differently, maybe. This one over here is more relaxed and, and they have different doctrines and they teach differently. But the two hate each other and they fight and they fight and they fight. And you know, so you don't know anywhere in, in Christianity, you do not have that sort of, they don't kill each other. They don't teach killing. They don't teach fighting and hatred. You know, it's only the Muslims are the only ones that will behead you if you don't agree with them. So think about that one. And, um, and so, so Christ didn't come to abolish the law. And the word says that he said on himself, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And he did do just that. And he also said in John 10, 10, that, uh, he, that Satan come to steal, kill and destroy that I have come to make, I have come to give life and give it more abundantly. Hallelujah. But you don't see this with the Muslim religion. And that's just one that comes to mind. So you don't see this sort of thing. And uh, even in some of the other reads like, like uh, Hinduism, you know, mercy killings and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is when the word says uh, nation will rise against nation, it's actually talking about two ethnic groups. Okay. In fact, truly, the people, most of the people anyhow do not know why the Arabs are still are so angry and hate the Israelites is because it comes down to a start. In fact, a start we know now from is from um, Isaac when Rebecca had the twins, you know, Esau and Isaac. And then we can go into a rabbit trail there because, you know, it's like when Isaac was old and when, when, you know, when anyhow, I mean, I can run into a trick because, and you go read, you continue to read on into their history and you can see that the younger now was blessed. Even, even up, even as far up, we see, um, Joseph's sons, you know, Joseph's sons, Manasseh and, uh, I can't remember the other one, but, you know, one of them was the, the younger one was given the birthright and the older one was not. So anyhow, go and study those words out. But this is a matter, what I'm teaching right now is about um, praying for your enemies. So we're just looking at some history here for right now. Um, so Edomites, like I said, they, they allied with Nebuchadnezzar in invading Jerusalem. They destroyed the first temple. They were extremely brutal to the Israelites. Okay, so they... Um, they embraced the Jewish culture only because of being invaded by the Maccabees. The Maccabees were Jews. Okay, there you go again. One Jew against another Jew. Muslim against Muslim. See? And then you see that nowadays in the United States and other places too, especially in the United States, I've noticed, oh, I'm Baptist. Oh, I'm Pentecostal. Oh, I'm Seventh Day Adventist. Whatever. And then they're fighting with each other. You're not right. I hate you. God didn't come for that. Jesus didn't come for that. God didn't send his only son for that. That's obvious. But uh, here we see that when the Maccabees, Maccabees rather, invaded the Edomites, uh, they, the Edomites started to adopt the, uh, the culture 
and the traditions, the ways, in other words, of the Jewish people or of the Israelites, see? So interesting here is uh, Herod ordered the construction of the second temple. Interesting, he was an Edomite. He was a distant Edomite, but he was an Edomite. See how God brings things around and uses even what is what is detestable in his sight. He will still use it for his good. If something's meant for evil and something happens to you as evil, he can turn around. He does turn it around and, and, and make it for his good. See, God is awesome. He is awesome. We serve an awesome God. Whew. So the Edomites are found in Genesis, 2 Kings, Psalms, 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Chronicles. Okay, they're also found in a couple other places too, mind you. Okay, so the Palestinians are the Edom, the Edomites. They're also known as Arabs. So remember that. There you go, because you got the AEU, you got which is United Arab, Air, United Arab. Okay, so you got those are the ones that live by the the EAU, I think it is. They live by the uh, the sea over there. So anyhow, you got that group of Arabs which are angry at these Arabs, they call them Pal uh, Palestinians, they're living in the West Bank now. Through deception, they got it. We all know that. But still, you see what I mean? And they're hating each other now. Hating each other. Ethnos, ethnos, and they fight. Wow. God help us. Can't wait for the regeneration of the world, man. So, wow. So, um, it's interesting fact here. This time in history, the Edomites were chosen to be royal because is it because of their birth okay let's say not chosen so i'm sorry they were not chosen to be royal with quote air quotes can't stand those things but it quotes around it because of their birth right but they because of election so it's election and that's how herod became uh king of judah Think about that one. He's pagan, but now you got a pagan ruler over Israelites, over the Jews. Interesting. So let's bring this discussion home. Question is here, okay, what must we do as children of God, believers in Christ Jesus, okay? Uh, what are Christians or followers of Christ supposed to be doing when we see calamity, misfortune, destruction, come to our enemies. Now, we were just told in Obadiah, we are going to be, uh, we are going to be judged. We are going to be rewarded how we treat others. If we see our enemy in distress, or we see somebody that really don't like us, and we don't like them, we don't like their attitude, they're living wrong, whatever, and you see them uh, being without food, well, let me tell you, you better, if you have the means, go and buy them some food. Because what you do to another person, you will stand in front of your creator. No doubt about it. Ask Jesus about it. Go and ask Father God in the name of Jesus to show you truth. And he'll tell you, you will be judged. See, and the thing is, even if you're a Christian and you've given your life and you're saved, you still will have to stand at the Bema seat. As after the rapture, we go right to the Bema seat and he, God tells us what we did wrong, what we did right, and give us, give us all our rewards. And then we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, that's all biblical too. And I have a couple teachings also on my YouTube channel. Look down the list. Okay. So, uh, uh, Scripture tells us to love our enemies and do good to them and then pray for them. Okay. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 and 45. Matthew 5. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Matthew 5, 44 and 45. What I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which spitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he that maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for reminding us that. And we are only human. We need to remind it. So ponder this, okay? The point is, 
uh, he, you know, Father God, Father Yahweh, will repay. He is the avenger. Let's look at that. 1 Thessalonians 4, 6. First Thessalonians uh, chapter four, verse six. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse six. that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also have forewarned you and testified. So this is another uh, verse that tells us exactly what Obadiah is saying. God will reward you. He's telling, he's, you can see that he's, it's basically it's a curse. That's all it is to it. You know, it's being prophesied. Obadiah at this time is talking and for God, by the Spirit of God, obviously. And he's, they're saying that Edomites will be destroyed because they did these things to their brother, nonetheless. You know, the children of God. And he, they, and God repaid them and gave them the same reward that they gave to his children. Whoa, God is the rewarder. 43 to 47. Okay, so let's read a little bit further into Matthew. Matthew chapter 5 is 43 to 47. Matthew 5, 43 to 47. Matthew 5, 43 to 47. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye uh, resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it has been said, that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which spitefully use you, and persecute you that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do so. So this book represents what God will do to his or our, our enemies, his and our enemies. Okay, so either way, our enemies will be destroyed. And this reminds me of um, Damascus being destroyed. I mean, it, you know, it is in Isaiah chapter 15. It says there that uh, Damascus will be totally annihilated. That's in the end times. And at this present time, it's only partially in, uninhabitable. So, Father, I thank you for the study in your word. I pray that everyone within the sound of my voice will go and do more research 
on this time period and whatever you bring to their mind. Father, I ask you to give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding once again. I ask you to upload this video quickly. And Father, bless them beyond measure. In Jesus' name.